Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of For the Now Space News, the often imitated but never replicated syntax news program. I'm your host, Colin Jason, hyphen Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. And uh, this is for the week ending Saturday, November 5th, 2022. Remember, remember the 5th of November. We have an exciting program for you today. Of course, we have the regular plethora of headlines, which will be syntaxed. We have the syntax lesson done in real time. We have some memes to tickle your funny bone. And we're going to check in on what uh, colon Mark hyphen lowercase k Kishon colon Christopher has been doing uh, since he's been kicked off of YouTube. Uh, he started on another platform, I guess. Uh, and a student sent me a most recent video of his, so I'll be taking a look at that during the cognitive conjecture portion of the program, which comes later on, so you might want to stick around for that. So let's get to it. With the first headline this evening, we're just going to jump right into the conspiratorial end of the pool and go right to our friends and neighbors at SOT.net from their high strangeness section. And uh, this headline reads, Richard Dolan, UFO Behavior and Abductions. And I see that this headline actually comes from August, uh, which I neglected to look at as I was looking through their website because it was on the main page of their website. But be that as it may, I, uh, I'm actually a big fan of Richard Dolan, so I thought it pertinent to include this in uh, the program for those of you who are interested in such things. Richard Dolan, UFO Behavior and Abductions. Seeing a UFO is often a baffling experience. What are those objects doing? After so many years, researchers still have not thought very much about this problem. Here, Richard tries to provide realistic possibilities, which definitely include abductions as probably the most important part of it all. So this comes from, I see it says YouTube, and it says Richard Dolan Intelligent Disclosure. However, I'm inclined to think that the editors at SOT.net wrote this introduction here. So I'm just going to go through this real quick. Um, I mean, you can see the syntax values there. Um, I'm not going to talk about those right now. You can take those as is. Also, the uh, parts highlighted yellow would be the particles of negation. Those particles of a word that negate the now space and are no contract. So just taking it at a surface value, it says seeing a UFO is often a baffling experience. Well, baffling in a, insofar as you don't know what it is, right? When you look it up the sky and it's behaving in a way that an airplane doesn't behave or anything you've ever seen before hasn't behaved. So in that sense, yes, I can see that they're baffling. What are those objects doing? We don't know. After so many years, researchers still have not thought very much about this problem. Why is it a problem? Who said it was a problem? Is it a problem in so much as, you know, <laughs> Uncle Johnny has a drinking problem and we got to solve that problem? Is it a problem like that? Is it the problem of well, world hunger or the economic crisis or wars? Is it a problem like war that needs a solution? How is a UFO uh, <laughs> experience a problem. I, I don't see it there, uh, unless they're trying to make problems. Maybe they don't. Maybe, maybe SOT.net just doesn't have enough problems, and they just need to create a few more. I wonder if Richard Dolan thinks of that of uh, UFOs as problems. In any case, let's look look at the headline here. We have Richard Dolan, which is an adjective pronoun. Those are both tangible contract names. And then you have the colon, which functions as a break in the continuance of the evidence. And then we start off with a tangible contract UFO adjective, which is coloring behavior into a pronoun. And of course, the particle of nation BE there. BE means no when used in this manner, such as behead means no head. And then we have the neutral condition of state conjunction and, which is zero, 
which is a neutral bridge in between the two pronouns behavior and abductions. And of course, any vowel in front of any consonant at the beginning of any word means no. Next headline comes from Democracy Now! Who killed Malcolm X? New York to pay $36 million for two men wrongfully jailed for 1965 murder. So who killed Malcolm, Malcolm X? I guess they don't know. New York. So, I don't know. Has anyone ever met New York? And if so, are they very wealthy? Because they'd have to be wealthy to pay $36 million. But this hasn't happened yet. It's in the future sometime. But the main point of this would be two men wrongfully jailed for 1965 murder. And as I covered, I think, in the last Now Space News, there is nothing, nothing that can make up for the state taking away years of an individual's life wrongfully. Who's going to pay for that? You think this is going to take care of it? Shouldn't, you know, if all things were equal and such a horrendous thing like this would happen, wouldn't the judge be put away? Wouldn't the prosecutors be put away? Everyone involved would be put away who did this to them if the system were fair. But uh, as it is, it's not fair, so that is not going to happen. We have adverb who, which is modifying killed into past tense adjective, which is coloring Malcolm into an adjective, which is coloring X into a pronoun. New York is a tangible contract name, so that's adjective pronoun. And as we all know, nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence, or as in this case, an adverb. But in this case, it's in the future tense, so it's a 1.9, which is modifying pay into an adjective, which is uh, coloring 36 into an adjective, which is coloring million into a pronoun, followed by adverb 4, adjective 2, pronoun men, wrongfully, is an adverb. We have the poison suffix ly there at the end, and then we have jailed as a past tense verb. 4 is an adverb, 1965, adjective, and then murder is a pronoun. Again, there is no justice in the justice system. Next headline comes from Al Jazeera. Israel kills four Palestinians in occupied West Bank, East Jerusalem. One man, Daoud Ryan, Rayan, was killed in Beit Daku a day after a man from the town was killed near a checkpoint. So we have... Israel is adjective, kills is adjective, for is adjective, Palestinians is a pronoun. All of those words are tangible contract. In is adverb, occupied is past tense adjective, west is adjective, bank is a pronoun, east is an adjective, and then Jerusalem is a pronoun. And again, as I've said many times before, this is a conflict that has gone on forever. It's very similar to what happened in North America when the First Nations were genocided, displaced, so that the settlers could move in and settle what was already occupied or what, what was already being uh, used. There were already people there. They just moved them out of the way by this or by smallpox, blankets, chemical warfare, whatever it is. They just got them out of there, herded them up like animals into little, you know, fenced-in areas, and then took over. The Industrial Revolution happened, and here we are, patriots. That's your country. And same thing's happening over there. Because of World War II, now there is this country right here, and now they're trying to push... The people that were there already, that were already there, push them out. Next headline comes from U.S. News and World Report. Pfizer launches trial of flu combination 
Experts hope a combined shot will simplify the process and lead to higher uptake for both diseases. So we have adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb, adjective, adjective, pronoun. And then uh, down below in the regular text, we have adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective in the past tense, adjective, adjective in the future tense, pronoun, adverb, verb, conjunction, verb, adverb in the future tense, adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun. Now, this is this is what we're talking about when we're talking about a fictitious conveyance of grammar. Not only the particles and negation in there, but we have two different tenses in the same sentence. We have combined, which is past tense, will, which is future tense, to, which is future tense. I mean, come on. What kind of goofiness is this? And they're launching a trial of this stuff. Uh, do they have a sequestered jury? I mean, is this a... They're trying it out to see if it's guilty or innocent or what's I wonder I wonder how those combinations plead. I wonder how that worked. Or if they even showed up, they might get a default judgment, right? Next headline comes from NPR. US court says a pageant can exclude transgender women in its competitions. And uh Although I'm not very educated on this type of thing, I have to think that what they mean by transgender women are actually men. Am I right? Because that would only make sense because women have pageants, right? They have beauty pageants. And so if you're a transgender woman, then that means that you're a man. So it could just as easily read, U.S. court says a pageant can exclude exclude men in its competitions, which makes much more sense. Adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, 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 pronoun, and then adverb, verb, dangling participle verb actually at the end there. And if you don't know what a dangling participle verb is, it just means that, well, ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, what is a verb? A verb is right. It's action, right? It's motion. It's thinking. Verb of the thinking. But we have competitions as a dangling participle verb because it's been modified by non-tangible contract adverb it's. But there's nothing left to think about. So it's just kind of dangling there. Hence, DPV. Another headline from NPR, right-wing groups spend millions of dollars on ads targeting transgender kids. So I guess right-wing groups spend millions of dollars on ads targeting transgender goats. Baby goats. Adjective, 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 pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, 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 pronoun. Just the, uh, I guess the society you have is the society you deserve. And there's no better example of that than uh, what I experienced uh, this past weekend for Halloween, just the general lack of manners, gratitude, etiquette by the children that were trick-or-treating in the neighborhood. Direct reflection of the parents. Next headline comes from Time. In their section, Climate, Extreme Weather. Thousands of migrant workers died in Qatar's extreme heat. The World Cup forced a reckoning. Pronoun. Adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun in the past tense. Adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun. Adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun in the past tense. Adverb, dangling participle verb. And again, this is... Uh, reflective of places like uh, what's that other place called uh, Dubai where you have all this beautiful architecture and uh, buildings and then right outside of that you have the migrant workers out there you have the the poor uh, individuals who are doing all the labor 
for nothing, living in shacks with dirt floors, no plumbing, no running water, and it's just terrible conditions. And But hey, you know, it's cheap labor, and that's what big business does. They find the cheapest labor they can get, and they'll use it. Now it's time for the syntax lesson, where we take a headline and syntax it. In real time, we perform forensics on it. And this one says, a complete timeline of Kanye West's anti-Semitism fallout. Page 6 estimates the rapper could face financial crisis within months as companies cut ties. I, you know, on a side note, I have to wonder, do people even know what Semitism is? Do they know what a Semite is? Quite simply, simply, if you look it up in an etymology dictionary, if you parse the word, Semite. In its most basic form, it just means someone who speaks a Semitic language. Jews can be Semitic. Arabs can be Semitic. Both Jews and Arabs are Semitic if they speak a Semitic language. So... <laughs> It's not exclusive to one race of people. It is not. People misunderstand that. So let's go through and pick out the particles of negation here. There's a standalone A, vowel in front of a consonant in of, vowel in front of a consonant. And then this part right here is in italics therefore it falls under four quarter rule it's not on the page so let's start the syntaxing this time i'm going to start from the front we have non-tangible contract adverb a which is modifying complete into an adjective which is coloring timeline into a pronoun and nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb, which is modifying Kanye into an adjective, which is coloring Wests into an adjective, and then anti-Semitism is an adjective, and then fallout is a pronoun. In sentences, ladies and gentlemen, we either end on twos or fours. They will either end on pronouns or adverb. Or, I'm sorry, pronouns or verbs. And the reason being that ones and threes Adverbs and adjectives are modifiers. They would not come at the end of a sentence, nor would they stand alone because they are modifiers. And if they are not modifying anything, then they would not be modifiers because there's nothing to modify. Hence, end of sentences will either be verbs or, as in this case, pronouns. Now it's time for memes of the week. Uh, this past week... House of the Dragon wrapped up the uh, Game of Thrones series, which I happened to watch uh, with my wife. And uh, this, of course, is the famous Daemon Targaryen. And I thought this was pretty funny. Boss, please reply to this email by the 12th. Me reading the email on the 15th. Uh, but they'll forgive Daemon for that. They forgive him for everything else. Elon Musk asks Twitter employees their pronouns and fires those who answered. Well, judging by the author of that, I don't know if I trust the validity of it, but it certainly is funny. And this last one is pretty funny because I guess this is a Halloween costume that someone actually wore to some Hollywood event. My internal organs watching me choose iced coffee over water again. Now it's time for the cognitive conjecture portion of the program. And uh, this is, uh, again, this was sent to me by a student. I hadn't heard about M lowercase k c in a long time. But here's where he is. He's on Rumble. Uh, this video got 120 views so far. Uh, 
nine rumbles. I don't see a date on it when it was published. Oh, Tuesday, 15th December? No, it says published November 3rd. Okay, so it was published on November 3rd and it has 120 views. Way less than what he had on YouTube. Woo. As a YouTube creator, to be kicked off of YouTube and then lose like 80% of your audience? That's got to hurt, bro. That's got to hurt. But I see he's on Patreon. I think. Oh, he has a Bitcoin. Uh, places where you can donate for his Bitcoins. Wallet. Uh, he's got all the other social medias. But no YouTube, which was his biggest platform. They kicked him off. And we're going to find out a little bit why about, about why they did when you watch this video right here. So let's see what he's up to here. Let's see what Mark has to say. So when you hear, ladies and gentlemen, when you hear that all of a sudden 130,000 votes was issued in Michigan all in one go, they are openly, openly telling you there is something wrong, so wake up. How can this possibly happen, even in the calculation of odds? The answer is, it cannot. So if something is so impossible, how can it be possible? Very simple. Robert's Rules of Order. The all powers of attorney, which is all null and void now. Because the state, which is a corporation, as opposed to a territory, did not tell you did not tell you what that the difference between a vote and election is and anybody withholding information to fraudulently make contract with you makes the contract null and void. Anybody that is authorizing, anybody that is authoring these types of documents, also they are 100% liable. First of all, why is this guy yelling? Wow. He's certainly changed his presentation. Now, he's, he's talking about Robert's Rules of a Corporation, which are guidelines for how to run corporations or corporate meetings or, or things like that. I don't know that they apply across the board. And maybe he gives jurisdiction to Robert's rules for his construct. But those are all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, nonsense rules. So I guess it would make sense that a guy like this would use those of some sort of authority. Also, he's talking about voting versus election. Which doesn't make any sense because election is no contract anyways. It's a vowel in front of a consonant if you're going to go there. But notice this. Notice this, ladies and gentlemen. Nowhere has he mentioned correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar. Nowhere has he mentioned that or anything about it. He's basically a fiction condition of state calling another fiction condition of state fraudulent. That's basically what's happening here. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, the FEMA camps are beginning to open. That is why they cannot escape. Because that which fraudulently contracts with human beings are called lies. They are non-factual. That is one of the mechanisms, ladies and gentlemen, that I have described to you. If I was to describe all the other mechanisms of why the American people, as well as the Venezuelans, with those Dominion machines, are constantly being robbed is because it was staring you in the face all the time. They are casting the votes on your behalf. Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen? It's null and void. It's all a circus anyways, Mark. It's all fiction. If it's not in correct sentence structure, it's fiction. 
I'm not sure he knows what correct sentence structure is. I will give you, in the middle of this presentation, the solution as well, just as I have done with the vaccines. Now, I'm a chief federal postal court judge as well as a planet potentiary judge, which means that I control the contracts and the language that it's written in. And he does what? Anybody just on the volition of that wanting to make fraudulent contract with you, fraudulently getting you to sign up to something that you was ignorant of. Ignorance, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is no excuse. But you was not told. And that's nascience. Because you was not told and somebody withheld that information as well as those things that are crucial to you are disabling you. And anybody that disables you have broken universal law. I am now going to put a... So I wonder if that applies to individuals who don't know correct sentence structure. Like, for example, the fiction cor corporations that he's constantly harping on about. Isn't he disabling them by using a special super type of grammar against them and they don't know about it so isn't he disabling them isn't that nascience because they don't know the grammar i mean he doesn't know it either he hasn't even mentioned it uh, but uh, that's your cognitive conjecture for this week this is the pot calling the kettle black That wraps it up for this week, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comments section of this video. If you'd like to join the membership of this channel, go ahead and click that join button and check out the two tiers and see what's available there. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, you can contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and apply for a correct grammar workshop. Keep in mind that there are terms and conditions to this. I just ask that you navigate with peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal, and honor and grace. And you authorize your email with your autograph at the bottom of the email which just means write your correct name at the bottom of the email so that I know that you know that you are taking an accountability for your words that you're using with me as you request to board my vessel. Thanks again, and I will see you next week.